recently discovered an international criminal organization with an atom bomb. We have no choice but to work together on this. Not very good at this whole subtly thing, are you? It'll be like this for 20 minutes. Can't touch. I like the idea that there's going to be a story about this. Um, Big fun. Uh, we're talking about you, yeah, not to you. you just, go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, stories always become exaggerated when someone has a particular faculty that's impressive. And we, I think, Lionel, you might have to, have to help me out here as that champagne's getting the better of me. No, you're doing great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he loved yeah, the idea. Yeah. He, he, loved, yeah. he loved the idea that, that you had this character who, and there was this, these sort of tall tales about him, superhumanly strong and, and just unstoppable, was actually a reality in the movie. He's trying to stop the car. And then the idea that they'd have to end up working together. And an American and a Russian at the height of the Cold War just felt like a great opportunity for storytelling. Why don't you take a shot at him? Somehow, it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do. You know, being an American, playing a Russian opposite a uh, guy playing an American, essentially, it's really strange because from the whole period from the Cold War on, like the 60s, 70s, and 80s, any time there was a Russian represented in film or anything like that, it was this arch villain sort of Boris and Natasha kind of thing. So I really kind of came down to contextual historical research and fi figuring out how this guy thought and why they thought their system was the best. What is it? Super hardened boron sharpened with a CO2 laser. Yeah. CO2 laser. Coming? The way. I built, and I say I, meaning we built the character, is through the rehearsals we had in Guy's living room. I mean, we started with um, like a Clark Gable-esque type thing. It just Clark, every, Clark every, Gable? Or... Cary Grant. Cary Grant. Cary Grant. Yeah. Well, every single person I say Clark Gable to... You've been saying Clark Gable it's for Cary Grant. Days. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's sort of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, 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 sort, of it's sort of that English Hollywood... Right, uh, well, OK, Cary Grant. Did Clark, yeah. hold on, Cary did Clark Grant. Gable have that English Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Oh, we did? They all did. So Betty Davis did. <laughs> there was a whole kind of anyway, English that, Hollywood thing. You know, that Betty Davis thing. Yeah, yeah, Betty Davis. <laughs> Betty Davis. <laughs> but we were trying to make it slightly different from Cary Grant as well. And uh, Guy would say <laughs> as well as in, in every uh, single... Betty in, Davis. After, after every single take, you go, that word sounds a little off, or this word sounds a little off. And eventually one day he says, look, you just sound like a British person who can't do an American accent. And so we made it more American. And once we found that, it was smoother and, and was easy from there. Or a suspicious man. I would say you put something in my drink. It's much easier to trust a drink you fixed yourself. But how do you know I was going to drink the scotch? I didn't. I laced all the drinks. I don't like to leave much to chance, Mr. Solo.